Hey, how's it going, geeks? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I showed you guys how to increase your power limit to 50% and also increase your memory clocks up to 1300 megahertz if your card allows it. And I've been doing a bit of testing with the power limit up to 50% and I've gotten some pretty bonkers results. Uh, as you guys can see here on the left side, I scored a 32,563. Now that's pretty darn insane considering the card is still running the stock cooler. As you guys can see over here comparing it to the stock number, we have about a 20% increase in performance overclocking this thing. Now that's just absolutely crazy. I do have an RTX 2080 and my RTX 2080 will not score this high. Um, I can't even break 32,000 with that card. So that's just absolutely bonkers. I got this score running the card at 2150 megahertz. Now that's peak engine clock uh, frequency. So the card was not running at 2150 megahertz the entire time. That just means it, it uh, boosted up to 2150 megahertz. I was running some metrics on the side briefly and the card was definitely boosting up to 2130, 2120-ish 21, uh, or so. I did notice the card was running into some throttling issues. I was hitting 2.12 gigahertz on the core, but I would notice the card would drop down to 1700 or 1800 or so. And that's just uh, limitations in the cooling of the stock uh, shroud the card has. But even with those thermal throttling spikes, the card managed to score a 32,500. Now that's just pretty pretty darn crazy so as you guys can see the Radeon 7 is a very very powerful card I feel like a lot of people don't give the card enough credit um, kind of like the Vega 64 the launch on both cards were very very similar um, drivers were a problem for both of the cards the initial reviews were out and a lot of the big channels don't go back and redo videos on those cards so I've noticed a lot of the channels are, or a lot of the channels have reviews with the beta drivers, which isn't really fair, since the beta drivers were super super finicky. Now I'm not biased against any company whatsoever. If you guys have been watching my channel, you guys know that I've had almost every single GTX 10 series card, um, from the 1050 all the way up to the 1080 Ti. I've had every single one of those cards and I've made videos on those. So I have nothing against NVIDIA whatsoever. Um, I don't like some of their practices but I don't have anything in specific uh, against that company at all. Um, I buy AMD products and I buy NVIDIA products as well. Now saying that, I prefer my Radeon 7 over my RTX 2080. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why? You know, there has to be a reason why. And it's actually quite simple. The reason why I like the Radeon 7 more is because everything is so easy to unlock. You know, you buy the card, you get the Radeon software, you have your unlocked voltage, so you can move your voltage up and down. Um, you can increase your power limit. And yeah, I'm aware you can do that with the RTX 2080 also, or in the other NVIDIA cards for that matter. But just everything is so much easier to do on AMD cards in general. You know, you can mess around with registry files. You can just uh, do everything so much easier. And uh, they require a bit more work. I will, I will say that much. AMD cards in general require a bit more work. But from my experience, once you put that bit of work in, they are just as good as the NVIDIA cards, if not better, in a lot of the cases. And the Radeon 7 compared to the RTX 2080 is no exception. In the next few days, I'm going to be releasing a bunch of videos comparing the Radeon 7 and my RTX 2080. And you guys are going to see firsthand what I'm talking about. I'm going to be taking wattage readings and no I'm not talking about software based readings because those are terribly accurate. I 
do not trust any form of software reading whatsoever. I always grab my kilowatt meter, plug it into the wall, and take the wattage readings out of the wall. And you guys will see just how efficient the Radeon 7 really is. Because I've noticed a lot of reviewers really don't compare the cards very well. You know, you get the generic benchmark metrics, your 1% lows, your 0.1% lows, and your graphs and whatnot. But they don't really, like, ever look at the wattage. They just tell you, you know, it's got a 295 watt TDP. The other card's got a 215 watt TDP. And boom, end of story. That's where they leave it. And uh, the few channels that do take wattage readings, they never tell you if, you know, the cards have been undervolted, the cards run in stock, which, uh, which AMD profile the card's running. Like, they don't give you any of that information. It's a well-known thing that Vega 64, Vega 56, Vega Frontier, and Radeon 7 are meant to be undervolted. There are very, very few exceptions um, from my experience where undervolting does not work. And in most of the cases, it's the Vega Frontiers. Because as many of you guys know, I've had, how many were there? Uh, I believe like 56 Vega 64 and 56s. So I have a pretty good idea at how well they undervolt and overclock. And almost every single one of those cards undervolts, and they undervolt by quite a bit. Yet nobody seems to ever talk about it for some reason. Um, the only cards that are a little bit problematic are the Vega Frontiers. I don't know if that's because it was really early on in the manufacturing process. Um, that might be a reason why, or if it's because of the 16 gigabytes of HBM2. Who knows, but for the most part, they all overclock really well. And I feel like Radeon 7 is no different. Yet, nobody really ever seems to bring that up. So yeah, this was just a quick video showing you guys some overclock numbers. And uh, I will say, I was pretty darn impressed with these results. I would honestly not be surprised if I slap a water block on this Radeon 7 card apply the exact same settings as I did on this test right here and score a 34,000 or higher without having the card throttle. That's how well this thing overclocks and I am really, really impressed. Um, I do understand it's gonna vary depending on your stock voltage and whatnot. This is my second Radeon 7 and the first one was was a pretty bad uh, bin card. I think I was only able to hit 31,000 or so and that's even though the core was what was it I believe the core was at 1140 millivolts at stock that's pretty darn bad and even then I was able to score 31,000 so I am really really impressed with this card so far but that's pretty much it guys stick around I got a lot more videos coming up um, a lot more videos on the Radeon 7 a lot more videos on the RTX 2080, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.